So in this video, we're gonna set up our very first React.js app with Chakra UI library. So as you can see, I've opened here our Mern chat app folder that we started in our previous video. If you're not yet following our series, you can click the link in the description to access the full playlist. So I'm gonna go to the terminal and type npx create react app and then the name of our app. I'm just gonna give this front end and press enter. Now it's gonna go to npm's repository and bring in the create react app package and set it up inside of this front end folder. So meanwhile, this is getting installed. I'm just gonna open another terminal and start our server, which was npm start. So great, our server has started. We're gonna come back to this later. There we go, our react app has finished installing. Now I'm gonna switch to that folder. So I'm gonna type cd front end and I'm gonna type npm start to start our app. Now, meanwhile, our app is starting. Let's go inside of the front end folder and see what do we get. So inside of here, we have three folders. First one is for node modules where all of our dependencies are installed. Other one is a public folder where we have all of our static files. And the third one is the SRC folder, which is our main folder where we have all of the project files. Okay, so our app has started. Let's go to, let's go and see our app. So. Here we go, Look on localhost 3000, our first React app has started, congratulations. Hit the like on this video if you have followed the video till over here. Now let's go back, so you can see this, edit src slash app.js and save to reload. Where is this written? It's written inside of this app.js file. So you see, this is our main file of the project. So if I remove all of this stuff and just say hello, you're gonna see, it says hello, awesome. and. You can see we have imported this CSS file inside of over here, this logo that was being displayed. So I'm gonna remove this logo here and from here as well, because we don't need it. And I'm gonna remove this setup and these test files and all of the files that we don't need. So yeah, that let's make it a little bit cleaner. And let's remove everything inside of the CSS file as well. And great, let's, let's have a look. Okay, okay, so inside of the index.js, this file was being used. So I removed it. So let me remove that from over here. Now let me explain how the uh, React app works. So inside of the public folder, we have this index.html file, right? Now this is your normal HTML file, just like you are used to seeing them. So inside of this, we have a normal head tag, body tag. Inside of the body tag, we have this div with ID of root. Now our app, everything inside of our app is rendered inside of this div, inside of this root div. So if you go inside of the index.js file, you can see this is a React app and we are doing document.getElementById and we are rendering everything inside of that root tag. So yep, this is how React works. Great. Now let's go to app.js and let's see if our app is working fine. Let me refresh it. Yep, you can see hello right here. Awesome. Now let's go on and install Chakra UI. So I'm gonna search Chakra UI. Now what is Chakra UI? So if you've heard of libraries like Material UI or Bootstrap, it's exactly similar to that. It is a component library. So a component library helps us develop our apps really fast because they have the pre-built component inside of them, which makes our app look a lot beautiful as well. So let's click on get started and see how we can install it. So here we go, here's the command to install Chakra UI. So I'm gonna copy it up and go back and paste it inside of our terminal. Great, meanwhile, this is installing. Let's see what else do we need. We need to set up the Chakra provider, okay. So inside the index.js file, we need to wrap our whole app with this Chakra provider. Okay, cool. So if you go back and inside of index.js, Yes, we are supposed to wrap our app with Chakra Provider. Just like this. Now, obviously this Chakra Provider does not exist yet because this library is, in, is still installing. Let's wait. And this has finished installing. Now I'm gonna go over here and control space. Um, okay, it's not giving me suggestion. Let's go back. Okay, we need this line. So import Chakra provider from Chakra UI slash react. Awesome, let's restart our app. Great, our app has successfully restarted. Now what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna show you how you can use Chakra UI. So I'm gonna quickly go and search for a button. So uh, let's search over here, button. And I'm gonna show you how you can render a component from Chakra UI. So if you want to render this 
beautiful looking button inside of our app. We just need to take this line and let's go back to our React tab inside of the app.js and inside of over here, I'm just gonna paste it and import this button. So I pressed control space and click on this. Yep, you see import button from Chakra UI button and save this. Let's check it out. Yep, you see button is displayed over here. Awesome. So similarly, we can provide it more attributes as well, like different, different color schemes. So this was a blue color and this is a teal color. And we have a bunch of other variants as well, such as this outlined, this ghost button, this link button. So yep, this is how a component library works. We can add an icon, etc. Great. Now let's go on and connect our backend with frontend. So in our previous video, we created our backend and our first API. Let's take that data and render it in our frontend app. As you can see, I've already started the port on 5000. So there's an issue over here. If we try to make an API call from our frontend to backend, it's going to give us a course error. So if you want to avoid that course error, we need to provide the proxy to our frontend app. The port of our backend is 5000 and the port of our frontend is 3000. So we need to have the same origin if we want to access an API from our frontend to backend. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kill this server and inside of the package.json file of inside of our frontend, not in the root, inside of the frontend, the package.json file, I'm going to add a proxy. So right below this, I'm going to add proxy. HTTP for our local host, it's 127.0.0.1 colon 5000. Yep, save it. And now if I start it, it's gonna run successfully just like this. As you might remember, our app has multiple pages. So first page, let me open the app first. Yep. So the first page is this login and sign up page. And if we log in, we have this another page, which is our chats page. So we need to install the, the React Router DOM to achieve this, so to achieve the multiple pages. So let's go back and I'm gonna kill the server and npm install React Router DOM. But I'm gonna install the version five of React Router DOM because version six is fairly new and a lot of you might not be aware of how to use the version six. So for this course, I'm gonna use version five of React Router DOM. So I'm gonna put this at five and press enter. Let's see. Yep, React Router DOM version five has been installed. Now let me restart my app. Now to use the React Router DOM, we have to wrap whole of our app with something called browser router. So I'm going to go to index.js and I'm going to wrap the whole of our app browser router. Just like that. And browser router will be imported from React Router DOM. So import from React Router DOM, just like this. Okay, now we're ready to create both of our routes. So I'm going to remove this button and our first route will be for our home page. So I'm going to give this path of slash and the other route will be for our chats page. So I'm going to give this path of chats and also we are supposed to import this route. So route will be imported from react router DOM. So import. Just like this. Okay. Now these both paths are going to take a component inside of it. So like this component, so let me just comment this out for now. Component will be something. So I'm going to create a new folder over here for all of our pages. Now inside of it, I'm going to create a home page dot JS and a chat page dot JS. So for home page, I'm going to say R A F C E press enter. If you don't know, this is an extension that I'm using, which I explained in our previous video. So you can watch that video if you want to know which extension I'm using. So for home page, I'm just going to say over here home and let's take this home page and I'm going to give this inside of this component. Let's import this just like this and save it. And let's go to our app and inside of the slash route, we should see, yep, home is rendered over here. Hmm, this is weird. Why is this dark color over here? I'm going to come back to this later for now. Okay, home page is rendered for chats page. I'm going to 
go to chat page R A F C E and I'm going to say chat page. Save this and now give this component for chat page. Great. Now let's see. Let's visit our slash chats route slash chats. Wait, what's going on? Home is also being rendered and chat page is also being rendered. So this is because this path is included in this path as well. So that's why this both of the components are being rendered. To avoid this, we are just going to give exact over here so that it goes to that exact path. Now you see chat page is only rendering the content inside of the chat page. Now let's go inside of the chat page and try to make our first API call to render the data from our back end to our front end. So over here, I'm going to say const fetch chats and inside of it. Okay, so to fetch our API, we're going to make use of a package called Axios. So I'm going to kill the server and install npm install Axios. There we go. Axios install. Let me restart the app. And now inside of it, we're going to fetch our API. So how we're going to do that? I'm going to say data equals await Axios dot get. We're going to make the get request. So actually, let me import the Axios. Now inside of this, I'm going to give the API endpoint, which was slash API slash chat. If you remember, also, this is giving us this error. It's because we need to make this async function in order to use is in order to await keyword. So let's save this now. Now I'm going to log this and see what do we get inside of this data. Also to call this function, I'm going to call this function in something called use effect. So use effect is a hook in react, which runs when the component is rendered for the first time. So inside of this use effect, I'm calling this function so that whenever this component is rendered, this will be called. Okay. Let's see. Let's go to our app and see the console. If I refresh this, okay, we need to go to chats page slash chats. All right, you see, we get this data which we were sending from our backend. So we have a bunch of things over here like config data, headers, request. We just need this data. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to destructure this data. And you see, we only get this data. Now let's try to render this data in our front end. So I'm going to go inside of over here, remove this chats page. And if you want to write the JavaScript inside of HTML in React, we use curly braces. All right. So, okay. One more thing, we need to store this data somewhere, right? Inside of our state. So we're going to create a state with the hook called use state. So I'm going to name this chats and initial value will be an empty array and import use state from react just like this and save this. Yep. Now what we're going to do is instead of this console logging, we're going to set the chats. So this has two things. One is the chats variable, which we're going to use to display the data and other is set chats, which will be used to change the value of this chats variable. So I'm going to take this set chats and copy it up and replace it over here. Now all of this data is going to go inside this variable and I'm going to take this variable chats over here and map through it. So let's see what do we get inside of this. So inside of this, we had the name of our chat, if it's group chat or not, the users, etc. So let's just for now, let's just render chat name. So I'm going to say chats dot map chat. And inside of it, I'm going to just give a div and inside of it, I'll say chat dot chat name. Let's save this and check it out. Yep. You see, it has rendered all the name of our chats and we can see an error over here. Each child in the list should have a unique key prop. Yes. In react, we, when we are using the map, we are supposed to give the key to each and every child element. So let's give this ID as the key. So what if I'm going to say key equals chat dot ID. Great. Now, if you refresh it, you won't see that error anymore. Great. So this is how we fetch the data from our backend and display it onto our front end. Now in the upcoming videos, you're going to see that I'll build this beautiful sidebar. And when, when we click on any particular chat, we can go to a single chat. 
So for that, we need to build our API endpoints, which will display the dynamic data and not just the static data like this. We should be able to search a user and create a chat. We should be able to create a group chat and a lot of things are coming in this course as we go forward. So subscribe to the channel if you're excited to watch more videos in this series and you can access the full playlist with the link in the description below.